name is John Heron. I'm the author of The Gut Health Protocol and formulator of an advanced probiotic prebiotic called Phage Complete. I call myself a meta-researcher as I research the research, try to put it all together, and bring it to you in a form that is much easier to digest, so to speak. I'm also the administrator of a very active Facebook support group that goes by the same name, The Gut Health Protocol. It provides a place to discuss almost anything gut related. However, you should not expect to get a diagnosis or a treatment plan for any medical condition in this group. That's what doctors are for. But you probably will find a lot of people that have very similar symptoms to what you have, perhaps even the same diagnosis. There is also a lot of good information to be found there. Phage Complete is a probiotic, prebiotic, like none other on the market. I'm sure you've heard this before, but this has been specifically formulated for people with gut sensitivities. If you haven't been able to take probiotics or prebiotics before, there's a good chance that you can take this one. It also helps rebuild the microbiome, and we all know how important that is. You can find out more on the Gut Health Protocol website. Today's video is going to be about die-off, also known as a Herxheimer reaction, or Herx for short. It will also touch on the related condition, leaky gut, or intestinal permeability. According to Wikipedia, a Herxheimer reaction is a reaction to endotoxin-like products released by the death of harmful microorganisms within the body. Note that this definition specifically mentions endotoxin-like products. These are substances such as lipopolysaccharides, or LPS, and are addressed in the Gut Health Protocol in Chapter 12. The cause of a true Herxheimer, or die-off, reaction is endotoxins, the primary endotoxin being lipopolysaccharides, or LPS. Other things may make you feel bad, but only the die-off of gram-negative bacteria can cause a true Herxheimer reaction. Below is a quote from Chapter 12 of the Gut Health Protocol. LPS are large molecules found in the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria. These molecules are made from lipids, or fats, and sugars. This membrane helps provide the bacteria protection and gives it structure. However, these molecules, when released into the bloodstream, elicit strong immune responses in humans. Below are some of the negative consequences of LPS endotoxins. Chronic inflammation. This can be damaging to the body in many ways and can cause symptoms not normally thought of as gut related. For example, arthritis. Many animal research studies of inflammation use LPS molecules as the easiest way to induce inflammation. Increased intestinal permeability. This is one of the primary causes of leaky gut. In severe cases, LPS can disrupt the blood-brain barrier, causing it to become permeable as well. LPS mo molecules can go systemic and cause damage throughout the body. Though our bodies work hard to detoxify LPS molecules before they do harm, it can't always keep up. Obesity. LPS has been found to induce inflammation resulting in the development of obesity. In a comparative study, it has been shown that when low doses of LPS were administered to mice for four weeks, they developed obesity similar to four weeks of a high-fat diet damage to the inner lining of the blood vessels and lymphatic vessels. Below is a partial list of die-off symptoms. Because endotoxins can travel to almost everywhere in the body, other symptoms are also possible. These are just the most common. I receive questions every day regarding die-off, and this is something I've experienced several times myself. Die-off symptoms can vary from person to person. I no longer have any SIBO or IBS symptoms, but when my SIBO was at its peak is when I experienced the worst die-off symptoms when adding kill supplements. 
Most anything I would take that killed bacteria would give me terrible die-off. For me, that meant a worsening of brain fog, muscle aches, and a worsening of diarrhea. Just yesterday, Valerie, not her real name, posted that she had just started taking cinnamon oil, one of the highly selective kill supplements. But she had to stop because she felt like she had the flu. I don't think this is a good idea to just stop. The fact that someone is experiencing die-off means they are killing gram-negative LPS producing bacteria. This is something that needs to happen at some point or another in order to get well. Though you don't want to stop completely, you do want to cut back on the kill supplements so that any symptoms are mild. You can even skip a day if necessary, but if you stop completely, the bacteria will quickly grow back and you'll never get better at that rate. Many of the symptoms of LPS bacteria can come from intestinal permeability or leaky gut. The Wikipedia definition here does a good job of explaining what leaky gut is. But in short, your small intestine is allowing very small food particles, often proteins, through that it shouldn't. The job of the small intestine is to allow nutrients and well digested and processed food through, for example, amino acids rather than complex proteins. When this goes awry, the body treats this foreign matter like an invader and mounts an immune response to it. This can cause inflammation and all kinds of symptoms, which are outlined on the next slide. The connection between leaky gut and lipopolysaccharides is clear. LPS molecules can cause leaky gut, or in doctor parlance, intestinal permeability. The connection between CYBO-D and LPS producing gram-negative bacteria is also clear. LPS producing bacteria can cause SIBO, though these strains may not be the only cause. Intestinal permeability is when the small intestine allows molecules through and into the blood that it normally blocks. LPS essentially punches holes in this barrier, though it is more complicated than that. So leaky gut can be caused by the day-to-day -day release of the LPS molecules by gram-negative bacteria. This is one of the reasons why it is so important to get rid of LPS producing bacteria and replace it with beneficial bacteria. The following is one of the many research studies on this topic. A defective intestinal tight junction barrier is an important pathogenic factor of inflammatory bowel disease and other inflammatory conditions of the gut. These studies show for the first time that LPS causes an increase in intestinal permeability. Here are just some of the many symptoms of leaky gut. Because these molecules can get into the blood system and travel throughout the body, more symptoms are possible. This is one of the reasons why people with gut issues can feel a lot better on a highly restrictive diet. The following two studies are just two of many on this topic. It is clear that LPS molecules caused by gram-negative bacteria lead to both systemic intestinal inflammation and leaky gut, or intestinal permeability. They may also lead to conditions such as inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, celiac disease, food allergies, irritable bowel syndrome, even obesity and type 2 diabetes. Please see Chapter 12 in the Gut Health Protocol for more information and studies. If killing gram-negative bacteria causes the release of LPS, and LPS molecules are so damaging, how does one ever get well? The first thing to know is that this LPS-producing bacteria is probably the cause of many of your day-to-day -day symptoms. Bacteria shed LPS molecules like humans shed skin cells 24-7, so they cause symptoms all the time. The trick to getting rid of this bacteria is to take it slow. Your body can detoxify LPS toxins if it is produced in moderation. However, 
killing too much gram-negative bacteria at once can overwhelm this detoxification process. With antibiotics, doctors often want the bacteria killed quickly to help avoid creating antibiotic-resistant strains, even if it does make you sick. With a natural protocol, this resistance does not occur. Therefore, you can adjust the dose of your protocol to keep die-off symptoms to a minimum, but you must keep at it until your microbiome is rebalanced and strong or the LPS bacteria will simply grow back. Here are some things that you can do to help the detox process. Drink plenty of water and avoid dehydrating drinks such as alcohol, coffee, and soda. Avoid all sugars, especially those that might mild absorb, such as lactose and fructose. This can help reduce the LPS load from bacteria. Take a milk thistle supplement to help support liver and kidneys. Get more sleep. Epsom salt baths. It seems to help some people, but not everyone. Mild exercise helps. A brisk walk is great. Don't overdo it while experiencing die-off. Anything inflammatory is not a good idea. Take a one-day break and or reduce the doses of any kill supplements. This gives the body time to help detoxify the endotoxins. Active charcoal supplements can help mop up LPS endotoxins in the gut. Summary. Die-off is caused by endotoxins, which are produced by gram-negative bacteria. The most common endotoxin is lipopolysaccharides, LPS. Getting rid of the LPS producing bacteria is a good thing. If the bacteria causes die-off, it causes you to feel sick even when not doing a kill protocol. Bacteria shed LPS molecules and they die naturally like any other organism. You should avoid severe die-off reactions by starting any kill supplement slowly and cutting back if necessary. There are things that you can do to detoxify better. Finally, keep at it and rebuild your microbiome to prevent a reoccurrence. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on die-off and leaky gut. This is not the most entertaining subject, but it isn't a hocus pocus either. There are logical reasons behind everything that happens in the body. Science is quickly starting to answer many of the questions as to why we have gut issues. And this is going to make it a lot easier to come up with protocols to treat them.